bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture today's class we are going to begin with another grammar topic the name of which is determiners now first of all what is a determiner now determiners are those words that introduce a noun or are used to qualify them so what do we mean by it determiners are those words that are always used now this will always make you remember that determiners are always used before a noun we always use a determiner before a noun okay so determiners are those words that we use before a noun and they are used to introduce the noun that is tell you something about the noun okay and they also tell you the quality of that noun now by qualify them i do not mean that they are telling me whether my noun is beautiful or pretty or clever or sad no they are telling me whether my noun is singular or plural whether it is countable or uncountable whether it is beginning with a consonant or a vowel whether it is you know talking about something which is near to me or far away from me and so on and so forth now in order to understand this topic better first thing that you need to know is that there are different types of determiners we have articles then we have demonstratives numbers quantifiers possessives and interrogative okay we are going to talk about each of them one by one and in detail so first let us begin with the first type of determiner which is articles now articles are further divided into three parts a and the okay the first article is a now where and how do we use a first it is used before a singular countable noun so article a is used before a singular countable noun second it is used before a word beginning with a consonant now what is a consonant we all know we have vowels in the english alphabet a e i o u so we have five vowels these are the five vowels other than these five vowels whatever 21 letters whatever 21 alphabets we have they are known as consonants so a is used before a noun which is singular that is one it is countable something that can be counted and it is beginning with a consonant for example a banana banana is singular 
it is countable can be counted and is beginning with b which is a vowel, uh, which is a consonant a rabbit again singular countable as well as beginning with a vowel a table singular countable beginning with a consonant a pen again singular countable beginning with a, a consonant and so on and so forth so first and the foremost thing to remember is that a is used before a noun which is singular countable and begins with a consonant sound but there is an exception in this case now what is that exception we just studied that every word that begins with a consonant sound will only have a before it but this is not the case if there is a word beginning with either e or u now both e and u are what they are your vowels but if there is a word which begins with either e or u but while pronouncing them while speaking them the first sound that you hear is u then we use a before it what did i tell you please understand carefully i told you that a is always used before a word before a noun which begins with a consonant consonants are those alphabets which are other than the vowels right but we have an exceptional case what is that exceptional case if there is a word which begins with either e or it begins with u both e and u are vowels so if a word begins with e or u and when we speak those words when we pronounce that word the first sound that you can hear is u in that case we will use the article a before them for example now i have written two words on the screen for you both of them are beginning with the vowel e european and eagle but when i speak these words what is the sound that you hear when i speak european what is the sound that you hear first u when i say the word eagle what is the sound that you hear e so we will say a european and eagle it is all about the sound and we only have to listen to the u sound that's it all the other sounds will have an before them but only the u sound will have a before it let us give you another example two words both beginning with the vowel u when i pronounce them union what is the sound that i hear union u umbrella what is the sound that you hear a uh. like i told you it's only about the sound when i hear the sound u i put a uh before it and any other sound will have an before it so a uh, union an umbrella let me give you another example
university and underpass we all know what is an underpass both beginning with u again listen to the sound when i say university what is the first sound that i hear u when i say underpass what is the first sound that i hear a uh. so a uh, university and underpass so those words which are beginning with either e or u but when we speak them the first sound that can be heard is u then in that case we have to use a uh before them this is an exceptional rule of articles so the three things to keep in mind before using a talking about something which is singular countable and something which begins with a consonant and the exceptional rule that if a word begins with e or u but the sound that you hear first is of u then we use a er before it now the second article that we have is an again an is also used before a singular and a countable noun but before a word beginning with a vowel so an is used before those words which are singular in nature they can be counted but these words begin with a vowel that is words like a e i o and u for example an apple an umbrella an ice cream an ink pot and so on and so forth so all these words apple umbrella ice cream ink pot these are singular nowhere can you see s they are countable also i can count them but they are all beginning with the vowel a u i i and so on now fit just like a we have exceptions in an as well now what are those exceptions if the a noun begins with an h but while speaking the h is silent then an will be used before them so again the exceptional case we've just learned that before the consonant sounds we always use a uh. h is also a consonant it is not a vowel but there are a few words that begin with an h but when we speak those words h is silent we cannot hear h rather what do we hear is the vowel sound at the beginning for example r when you speak this word r do you hear the h sound we don't say har we say r so what is the first sound a uh. a uh is a vowel so an r honest man honest o is the sound that you can hear not honest so an similarly if i give you another example honorable person honor we don't say honor we say honor o is the first sound so an 
so what does my exception say that if my noun is beginning with h but when speaking that h is silent we use an before it we have another exception to this again if a word begins with a consonant but while speaking the first sound is that of a then what do we do we use an before it so if a word is beginning with a consonant but when you are speaking that word the sound that you hear first is that of a we will use an before that for example this is mostly so in the case of certain designations you know in the case of certain uh, you know positions that you are talking about for example m l a s h o m p m a now when i say the word m do i do not hear the word m first what do i hear first a m a is the sound that you hear so i will say an m l a if i say the word s h o the sound it isn't s it is a s so an s h o m p again an m p m a again an m a and so on so these are the two exceptions that we have in case of an first exception says that if my noun begins with an h but when we speak that word h is silent we will use an before it if my word begins with any consonant for that matter but when we speak that letter when we speak that word the first sound that you can hear is a then also we will use an before it so these are the four uses of an it is used before a singular countable noun it is used before those words which begin with a vowel exceptional case it is used before a word that begins with an h but when speaking the word h is silent an honest man an are similarly the fourth rule again an exception it is used before a word which begins with a consonant but when we speak that word the first sound that you hear is a so an m l a an s h o an m p and so on and so forth the third and the last article that we have is the there were three articles a an and the last article is the now what are the uses of the first use of the it is used before a noun which is important in some way you know there is some sort of importance that can be attached to that noun for example the apple tree if i am talking about some particular apple tree to which i wish to give some sort of importance then the apple tree the museum 
if I don't use the, it will be any general museum. I went to a museum. It can be any museum. But if I wish to talk about some very important museum where I went, I am going to write the. I went to the museum. So here, the is used to talk about something which is very important. I can say there is an apple tree in the, in the orchard. It can be any apple tree. There are so many apple trees. But if there is something very important about one of those apple trees about which I wish to lay emphasis on, then I will say the apple tree. Okay. The second rule. It is used before a noun. which is one of its type something which is unique something which does not have any other substitute something which does not have any other you know replica for example the earth we have only one earth the sun the moon the universe, the planets, the galaxies, the uh, you know the solar system, all these things are just one of their kinds. We do not have anything else to replace them. So we use the before them. Next rule. It is always used before the dates. Whenever you are writing a date in a sentence, we will always write the before it. For example, I was born on the 15th September. She fell down on the 16th October. We bought a new house on the 20th November and so on and so forth. So whenever we are writing a date, we always use the before it. Next, it is used before United Countries. Before the large regions, we use it before mountains, deserts, oceans, seas. What do I mean by United Countries? The United States of America, the United Kingdom, the United Emirates of Arab. So only the United Countries, we use the before them. Large regions that we have, you know, the, uh, you know, let me say if I'm talking about a very large place, the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Sea, the Thar Desert, the Himalayas, the, uh, you know, the K2, the Mount K2. So, whatever is so important, we always use the before them. Next usage is, we always use it before the superlative degree of adjectives. Superlative degree of adjectives, for example, the tallest, the smartest, the most hardworking and so on and so forth. So something which is superlative, we use the before it. Next, some words referring to nature or the environment generally.
so those words which are related to the nature or are related to the environment in general we use the before them as well for example the beach the town the countryside the seaside and so on and so forth next we always use the before the time expressions what do we mean by time expressions for example in the afternoon in the evening in the morning before night we always use at and we don't use the before night then on the day before yesterday the week before yesterday in summer winter spring before them also we use the so these my dear students are the uses of the that we have learned first it is always used about something which is very important to which you wish to give some special emphasis for example the apple tree the museum the, the road so something very particular that you are talking about second noun which is one of its type you know which does not have any other alternative the earth the universe the solar system the planet the galaxies and so on and so forth it is used before all the dates the 2nd october the 3rd november the 4th september and so on and so forth next we use it before the united countries the united states of america the united kingdom the united arab emirates we use it before large regions <coughs> before mountains deserts oceans seas and so on and so forth then we use them before the superlative degree of adjectives the tallest the smartest the highest the lowest and so on and so forth we then use them before some words which are related to the environment in general the earth the nature the beach the town the countryside and then before the time expressions in the morning in the evening in the afternoon in the summers in the winters in the spring on the day before yesterday so such are the uses of the now where do we not use articles there are a few cases in which we never use articles now what are those cases first case we never use them before any sport we will never say a football or the football football always remains football without any article cricket baseball basketball tennis table tennis ludo so whatever sport you are talking about we will not use the a uh, or and before them we never use an article when obviously talking about anything in general what do we mean by that for example if i'm talking generally about the people nowadays so if i say that people have become very responsible 
who am I talking about in this sentence? I'm talking about generally the people, the population of the country. So when I'm talking about somebody in general, I will not use any article. If I say children are very naughty these days and full stop. What am I saying here in general? That children, you know, these days children are very naughty. So this again is something in general that I'm talking about. So no article will be used before them. Next, we don't use them before uncountable nouns. when talking about them generally again when we are talking something about an uncountable noun so where we are talking about some uncountable noun and that too in a general manner for example if i say milk is very healthy what are we talking about? What is my noun here? Milk. I'm talking about the quality of milk in general. That milk is very healthy. So, no article is used before them. If I say, for example, news is important. News is again uncountable. But I am talking about it in general that news is important. It is important to listen to the news. So the uncountable nouns which we are discussing about or talking about in general, we never use an article before them. And last, we never use any article before India, Nepal and England. Before these three countries also, we never use any articles. So, what did we discuss under the first type of determiner? Articles was the first type. Articles further have three parts, A and the. We discussed about each of those parts and I also told you about the cases in which we will never use an article. So, A is used before something which is singular, countable and begins with a consonant sound. But there is an exceptional rule. If I am talking about a word which begins with either E or U, but when speaking that word, the sound that you hear is U, then obviously we will put A before it rather than using AN. The second type of article uh, that we talked about was AN. AN is also used before something which is singular, countable and begins with a vowel, an eagle, an umbrella, an ice cream, an ink pot, so on and so forth. There are two exceptional cases with the usage of AN. First, it is used before a word which begins with H, but when we speak that word, the sound of H is silent. AN are AN honest man, AN honorable man. And the second case, exceptional case of the uh, article AN is, if we are talking about any word which is beginning with a consonant, but when we speak that word, the first sound that can be heard is that of A. For example, MP, MLA, SHO. All these words are beginning with different, different consonants. But when we are speaking them, we use A before them because the sound is A, so we use AN before them. The next article was the. I told you about the different uses of the before the Arab uh, United countries, before mountains, before dates, before something which is very important, before the superlative degrees and so on and so forth and I also discussed with you the four cases which are to be kept in mind because we never use an article in those cases. The second type of determiner that we have is demonstratives.
now very simple demonstrators are very very simple there are four types of demonstrators this that these those these are the only four demonstrators that we have this is used before something it is used before a noun that is singular and nearby something which is singular in nature and something which is very much near to you whatever things you can see around yourselves you know which can be touched by you for them we use this for example i am using a pen so this is a pen so anything which is singular in nature and is very near to me we will use this for those nouns so this is a pen this is my new car if i wish to say this is my pet and so on and so forth the next uh, demonstrative is that now that is used before a noun that is singular but far away so a demonstrate the demonstrative that is used before a noun which is singular in nature but is far away from you imagine yourself sitting in front of your laptops or your computers and there is a tree outside your window now that tree is out of your reach you cannot touch that tree obviously so i will say that is a tree so tree which is singular but is far away from me i will use that for it another example if i say that is my car so you are showing somebody you are pointing at your car you are telling somebody that there which is standing a bit far away so that is your car so that is used for something which is plural uh, which is singular but is far away from us now comes these and those these is used for a noun that is plural but nearby something which is near to you but they are plural in number for example if you have books around you sitting you are studying and you have a lot of books around you so you will say that these are my books similarly imagine yourself being in a garden surrounded by beautiful flowers beautiful trees you'll say these are beautiful trees so something which is plural and is near to you if we use these for those nouns and the last one is those we use those before a noun that is plural but far away so a noun which is plural in nature but is far away from you we are going to use those for those nouns for example you can see a lot of kids playing in the garden okay and you are pointing to them so those children are playing or if i say those birds are chirping so 
four types of uh, demonstratives this that these those this is used before something this is used before a noun to be precise which is singular and is nearby that is used before a noun which is singular and far away these is used before a noun which is singular uh, which is plural and nearby and those is used before a noun which are plural and far away the next type of determiners that we have are possessives now what do possessives show possessives show belongingness something that belongs to you is your possession and when it is used before a noun very important it is a possessive determiner what are the possessives that we have my your are there his her and its for example this is my house what is my noun house which word is telling me that the house belongs to me that it is my possession my so my is the possessive determiner if i say this is her book what is my noun book what word tells me that the book belongs to her this is a possessive determiner if i say this is their child what is my noun child what word tells me that the child is somebody's belonging there so there is my possessive determiner if i say this is our car what is my noun i'm talking about car what word represents that the car belongs to us r so this is a possessive determiner in all the cases that you can see my possessive determiner is used before a noun and it tells us that something belongs to someone it is somebody's belonging the next type of determiner that we have is quantifiers so the next type are quantifiers now what are quantifiers those words which answer the question how many and how much so those words which answer these two questions how many and how much so those words are going to be quantifiers now what are the few examples of quantifiers that we have few a few some many much each or rather so each every any and so on and so forth so these are all the quantifiers why because they are either going to answer your question how many so how many pens were there many pens were there or they are going to answer the question how much how much milk was in the jar there was okay some milk in the jar for example 
now quantifiers will depend on whether the noun can be countable uncountable what quantifiers do we use before the countable nouns we use many i can say many books a few notebooks few books a couple of oranges several apples and so on so all these quantifiers are always used before a noun which can be counted then we have those quantifiers which are used before those nouns which cannot be counted for example little there is little milk in the jar there is much noise in the garden there is a little water in the bottle and so on and so forth and what are those quantifiers that can be used both for countable as well as uncountable so what are those quantifiers that we use before both countable and uncountable words like all of we can use all of before both countable as well as the uncountable i can say all of the students i can say all of the milk so some some students some milk most of most of the students most of the milk enough i have enough money with me i have enough food with me a lot of i have a lot of books i have a lot of water and plenty of i have plenty of water i have plenty of books so these are what the quantifiers are those words which answer the question how many and how much are known as quantifiers quantifiers further depend on whether the noun is countable or uncountable we have different quantifiers for countable nouns uncountable nouns and there are a few quantifiers that can be used before both the next type is number now numbers again can be of two types there are two types of numbers cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers now explaining numbers is something which obviously isn't required because we all know what numbers are so we have two types of numbers we have either the cardinal numbers or we have the ordinal numbers now what is the difference between cardinal and ordinal the simple numbers like 1 2 3 4 and so on and so forth are cardinal numbers and what are ordinal numbers numbers like first second third fourth and so on and so forth both of them cardinal as well as ordinal they are used before a noun only for example i can say i have one book book is my noun what uh, how do we I, i know the quantity of the book i have one book similarly if i say i am the first girl in the class to speak the answer what is my noun girl and my ordinal de uh, determiner is used before it if i give you another example she has four cats my noun is cats 
what is the number of my cats that I have? Four. So, four cats. This is a determiner. Similarly, if I say Rohan got the fourth um, Rohan got the fourth pen from the bundle. So there's a bundle, there's a bunch of pens and Rohan got the fourth pen. So what is my noun? Pen. And I used my ordinal determiner before that. So numbers can further be divided into two. Cardinal as well as the ordinal numbers. Cardinal numbers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. And ordinal numbers are numbers like 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. In both the cases, we have to remember that a determiner, being a determiner, they are always used before a noun. The last type of determiners that we are going to learn about is interrogatives interrogative determiners now interrogatives what are the words that we have what which and whose these are my three interrogative determiners and they are always followed by a noun for example, which book is your favorite? What am I talking about here? The book. My noun is book and my determiner is used before it which is which. So which is the interrogative determiner. If I say whose pen is this what is my noun pen and what determiner is used before the noun pen whose what car do you like what is my noun car and the determiner, the interrogative determiner that I'm using before my noun is what? So interrogative determiners, we have three interrogative determiners, what, which and whose. And they are always used to, uh, to represent a noun in an interrogative sentence. And there is one last, I just remember that I have forgotten to make a mention of one last determiner which is distributives. Now what are distributives? Distributives refer to a group or individual members of the group so the distributives are those words that refer to either a group or they refer to individual member of the group for example now what are my distributives that I have both each every half neither either these are my distributives as the name suggests they are going to tell us whether we are talking about something individually or we are talking about something holistically for example both the boys were talking. What is my noun in this sentence? The boys. And what determiner am I using to tell that both of them are talking? Both. If I say each child 
is special or I can even say every child is special. So my noun is child and I'm talking about individually that each and every child is important. If I say neither of the or rather if I say neither tea nor coffee suits me. What are my nouns? Tea and coffee. I'm using neither to represent them so that I can say that neither do I like one nor do I like the other one. So distributives are those words, are those determiners that talk about something individually or something in a group. And with this, my dear students, we come to the end of this topic, determiners. We told you about the different types of determiners, articles, three types of articles, A, and and the. Then I told you about demonstratives. We have this, that, these, those. Quantifiers, how to use quantifiers before a countable noun, uncountable noun, and both countable as well as uncountable nouns. Then I told you about numbers and we have two types, cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers. Then we talk, talked about the interrogatives, three interrogative determiners we have, what, which and whose. And last one was distributives. Distributives talk about those words which refer to either a group of something or individually refer to something. So, my dear students, I really hope that you've understood this topic well and I'll see you all now in my next lecture. Thank you.